Lieutenant. Detective, you're up early. No, actually, I'm up late. See, I spent half the night trying to figure out how my niece and her partner made a shots fired call and received absolutely no backup. What happened? This radio is what happened. See, Vonda made the call that the battery was dead, like most of them are half the time in this city. Isn't that right? And I meet all of you upstairs. I thought you were going to get them replaced. The mayor's office is holding up the request. Oh, okay. Then I'm going to march right up to City Hall. I'm going to find our fearless leader. I'm going to shove this right where the sun don't shine. Just giving you a heads up so you know how to play it to the media when the story breaks that cop puts mayor in intensive care with broken police radio. Jarek, stop. No, what's that? I can't stop. hear you. The battery's broken. Give okay. me the radio. No, this piece of garbage almost got my niece killed. Look, if shots had been fired on an officer last night, I would have heard about it. So maybe you're just putting a little bit of extra mustard on this particular hot dog. Okay, so she wasn't shot of it. What if she was? Huh? What about next time? Give it to me. Give it to me. As effective as hospitalizing the mayor sounds as a negotiating tactic, why don't you just give me one last shot at getting this done? All right, I'm serious about this, though. I know you are. So let me just try to do it my way. Do you have something that you can be doing right now? Some real police work, maybe? Oh, there's a little something Boy Wonder and I are cooking up, yeah. All right, well, why don't you get back in the kitchen? Leave this to me. In Chicago, it's always been a game of cat and mouse between copper and criminal. At the 1893 World's Fair, Inspector John Bonfield handpicked 300 men from around the world to blend in with the tourists and keep the city's visitors safe. They made 845 arrests, returned 861 items to their rightful owners, and kept the world's first Ferris wheel safe from hoodlums. Nowadays, the machines may have changed, but the game's the same. Fool the bad guys. Up, man, we're repossessing it. We possess it. I'll pay yeah. cash for this car, homie. Hey, yo, slow down. So you're Raymond McDonald's? No, I ain't Ray, man. Ray, my little brother, man. I'm Marcus. But this ain't his car, man. Well, that what about? Really messed up. Hey, man, put my car down, man. Can I talk to your brother? Maybe we can figure oh, this out. Oh, man, he in the shower, homie. Hey, put what my car down, man. Brother? Tyrone, is he in there, too? Yeah, Tyrone in the house. How you know about time? City pays us, you know. Turn around. Come on, show me your ass. Dance, big boy. Oh, yeah. Man. Come on, hit the back. Deliver his two brothers, he says they're inside. Make it out on the ground. Oh, here's one of them. Some license and registration, Tyrone. How long have we known each other, Dennis? Long enough for me to know that the famous Teresa Colvin charm is about to be unleashed. I've never been down to the Wild Hundreds after dark. I try not to make it a habit. Well, let's just say you're a beat copper and you're working at 1099 because budget cuts means that we can't afford to have two officers in a car. Uh huh. And it's 3, 3.30 in the morning. And as you're riding solo, you hear shots fired. And lo and behold, there's a suspect fleeing the scene. Uh, Teresa, So I'm... you chase him. Because for $45,000 a year plus overtime, every civilian in this city expects you to chase him. And you know that he's got a gun. And no one knows where you are. Or that you're even in danger. Now, call for backup. So you can make sure you get home to your kids alive. It's dead. That's right. Because you work a nine-hour shift, and a lot of these batteries only last for six. So you just got your head shot off because your department and your mayor won't give you radios that work. Mayor McGinnis has a number of obligations when it comes to stimulus money. Now, perhaps you should run a proposal past Alderman Gibbons. You'll see if he'll submit an appropriations request on your behalf. Alderman Gibbons did not promise me radios, Dennis. You and the mayor did. And at the time, we meant it. Was that before After Streets and Sanitations hired the mayor's new brother-in-law and stole my radio money to buy new snow plows? It snows in Chicago. People need to drive to work. Well, the mayor's latest favor swap is going to get cops killed. How's that story going to play? Now, don't go making threats against the mayor. He's the one who put you in this job. You don't bite the hand that, that is that slapping me in the face. 
I'm sorry. Superintendent Coleman, it's important. It always is. Hey, hell is this, Wasaki? I spent six months working on these guys. Well, that's just it. Most streets couldn't wait another six feet to trip over and arrest. Sorry, man. Better luck next time. Oh, you too, huh? You're a weed dealer, Marcus. You've never been caught with the hard stuff. All of a sudden, you're crooking up crack, and I'm busting down your door, and repoing your car, and... I don't get it, man. Why the menu change? At times it's hard, man. <laughs> I mean, weed is all right, but rocks... That's where the money at. The customer knows best. All right, we'll put this in your pipe. I'm going to let you and your brothers go scot-free if you give me a Coke supplier. Come on, man. What are you doing? I'm working here. Superintendent wants you both over at Midwestern Med ASAP. Don't worry, Wasaki. Happy to jump on this one for you. Marcus? Hey, so... So what do you need me for? She just wants whoever sold the smack to put her son into a coma, caught and punished. You know what? The cafeteria, second floor. They got a lemon meringue pie that'll blow your mind. We're about to go in. No, I'm about to go in. And when I get out, I'm going to be in the mood for tangy and refreshing dessert. No, I'm about to jump over a big Coke supplier, and you drag me away to hold the hand of some rich lady because a kid fried his brain with a wad of smack? Amanda Langley is a major philanthropist. Her husband owns half the city. He doesn't buy any rhythm from where I stand. Which is why you tapped out at detective, and I'm superintendent. Look, neither one of us likes this. I just learned to smile and say thank you. Now, this woman has friends in high places. She wants my best man, so I called him. This isn't even the case. Just find the kid's dealer, and you'll be back on your Coke bus by lunch. No, forget about lunch. I'll this now down by noon. Time's a wasting. Teresa, finally. Amanda, Ted, I am so sorry this happened. If you'd asked me a year ago, I'd have said it was just a matter of time. But to know he was trying to get clean, how hard he was trying. This is Detective Wasaki. He'll be working your son's case. Ma'am, so you are aware your son has a drug problem? I knew he had a problem in the past, but he was getting better. Was he in rehab or any kind of program? No, but his girlfriend was helping him stay clean. What's her name? Emily. Beautiful girl. I don't think she knows yet. Does Emily have a last name? Harris, I think. Is that right, dear Emily Harris? Uh, I don't know. I, I never met her. I know. Teddy thought the world of her. I realize you have more important things to do. Amanda, this is my top priority. He's my son. They say he may never wake up. Please, just find the animals that sold him the drugs that did this to him. Is there anything else you could tell us? When we went by his place, his car wasn't there. Maybe you'll find that dealer driving it. Okay, thank you. You've been a great help. I'll keep you apprised of everything we learn. Jump, jump, yeah. Jump, jump, yeah. Jump, jump, jump. So would you go to the academy straight out of high school? Nope. Trade school? College. Good for you. Where? Northwestern. That's a quality school. Yep. Right, so let me get this straight. You went to Northwestern first, and then you went to the academy. Yes. That's what I did. Sorry, did I do something? No, dude. I'm just trying to get to know my partner. Wasaki. Hey, sweetie. Hey, baby. Look, I'm working on someone right now. I know, but my sister just changed her wedding to August 20th because that was the only day they could get in the hall. Okay. And I don't want to have ours too close to hers, so if you don't want to do June, we're looking at late September. Look, early... baby, can we talk about this when I'm not on the clock? 
Okay, but we need to figure all this stuff out soon. We will, we will, I promise. Tonight, we'll talk. Okay, baby, I love you. Love you too. Fall's well, a beautiful time to get married. How old's your fiance again? 27. Right. She sounds nice. Elena, right? Yeah. Elena. <clears throat> so, where'd you meet her again? Look, you're gonna miss your turn off right here. Emily Harris? No, I'm Taylor. Emily's my roommate. Is she around? No, she didn't come home last night. Is that why you guys are here? We come in? Sure. We're Dedor and Emily together when you saw them last night? We were at Demimond. You know that club on Dearborn? And Teddy showed up at our table. He was really angry about something, and he took off. She ran after him, and that's the last time I saw either of them. Did you hear what they were fighting about? No. Any idea where Teddy liked to buy his heroin when he was using? Yeah. A guy named Mason. Real tool. Excellent. You know we can find this guy? Yeah, I have an address. Hang on a sec. Out of your league, Northwestern. She's Harvard material. Two girls their age living in a place like this. What'd she say? They were students? Oh, yeah. She's got a master's in spending her daddy's money. Same as the rest of these jag holes. Oh, but you wouldn't know anything about that college boy, would you? Don't tell Mason I sent you, okay? Oh, Mason Goldberg. Have a word. What for? Well, for starters, you're under arrest for selling a little bit too much heroin to your good friend Theodore Langley III. If you've got a warrant, show it to my lawyer. No, dude, I don't need no warrant to throw the bracelets on you. Huh? Well, what do you know? Three minutes to noon. You get this. Saki. Hey, Officer Salzman, 18th District. Uh, what was that place you guys were looking for again? Uh, I need a new partner. No. What do you What do you mean no? <laughs> okay, why? Why? Because look at him. I mean, not only is he a Cubs fan, but he's a, he's a college boy. You said he was impressive. You said he had skills. That was before I found out he's applied to the FBI. And he's still waiting to hear back from those desk jockeys. Did you did you know anything about that? So? So, so you don't give up being real Chicago police to be some Washington accountant afraid to kick in a door. You know, anyone that writes with me needs to understand that. And anyone who works for me needs to understand that personnel files are private. So whatever you did to access his classified information, you just pretend you didn't. Ambition's not a crime, Jerry. Fine. Promote him somewhere else, then. It calms me knowing he's with you. Give it a month. Teddy's girlfriend? Emily Harris. Well, what do you know? Looks like we got a case after all. Little K working the package on the 1800 block. CC Wells crew on the 1500. So far, Marcus, you're batting a thousand. Hey, personal space, Marcus. And screw your personal space. I ain't getting seen. Gangs fly a family out from LA or Phoenix. Have them rent a place, put down roots. A couple months later, mom and the kids go back home. Landlord stuck with a house full of criminals he's afraid to try and evict. And the gang's got a base to move product in the city for a few months. Till they pack up and do it all over again. Sound about right, Marcus? Yeah, it sounds about right. So we drop in tonight, it'll be like a like a housewarming party. What do you think, Marcus? Should we bring casserole? Or just a <laughs> battering ram? Just get me the hell out of this hood. Don't worry, we'll have you hidden away when we raid your supplier. So what do you say? Hell like yes. task force beat the crap out of street patrol? Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> hell yes. I believe it's on page 20. You'll see at the top of it. What do you think of the jacket? It's new. It looks nice. Looks good? Why? Because I'm going to nightclubbing later on down to the latest hotspot, Demimond. Yeah, apparently it was the last place your boy Teddy was seen alive. 
According to his friends, he's been going there a lot lately. So, J. Edgar Hoover, myself, getting dressed up, hit the floor, bust a couple of moves. Hey. Huh. Anything else on your social calendar that I should be aware of? Oh, I'm in the middle of something here, Jerry. Just giving you a heads up. You put me on this case Excuse as a favor to some influential friends, so now we've got a dead girl. And it looks like the son might be the one that did it, so I'm going to go after this. I'm going to make sure justice gets done. I'm not going to be part of some whitewash to protect some rich kid's memory. Do you really think that I would be part of a cover-up? No, but I know the way political pressure works in Chicago. You just find the truth, and I will back you up. Good. Good. I'll let you know my wrecking ball knocks down. Hey, don't sound so gleeful about it. Wait, you still got lined up for the mayor. It's not necessary. I'm making progress on the radios. We shall see. <laughs> A uh, typical night out for you, Big Tim? Not exactly. Did you see that? All you gotta do is point. The table's out the front. I'm guessing a private room or two out the back. Everything money can buy. You know what this place is, don't you? It's a whorehouse. You got the madam up the top. Got ten years and every girl in the place in the aftermarket parts to prove it. Oh, there we go. Future Mrs. Caleb Evans is a working girl. Come on. See if she knows. I'd buy you a drink, but I'm not sure I can afford it. If you're not sure, you can't. What if I wanted to buy more than a drink? How much would that run me? <laughs> this isn't a massage parlor, detective. No, it's a high-end cat house. And I'm trying to figure out why a girl like you would choose to be a, a hooker. I'm not a hooker. If a man wants to spend time with me, he can show me his appreciation. But it's not like I'm giving him a bill at the end of the night and saying pay up. Oh, so you sleep with men for rent money instead of straight up cash. I'm sorry, I don't, I don't really see the difference. What's for sale here isn't sex. It's an experience. Let it happen. See that? That is $2,400 worth of vodka. Watch. Oh. She's got a black card. Lucky girl, she'll make a lot of money tonight. Look, I'm young, I'm having fun, and maybe someday I'll meet the black card of my dreams. Is that what Teddy was to Emily? A credit card? At first, but they fell in love. People fall in love, you know. Sometimes the experience works. So we'd never beat her to death and throw in the river like a piece of garbage. What? No, because that's where we found your friend Emily. In the river, beaten to death in Teddy's car. I mean, you saw them leave this place together, and then he went and killed her. No. No, Teddy loves Emily. He'd never hurt her. Someone treated her to that experience. So, you want to help us figure out who it was, or wait to see if they come knocking on your door next? Hey, baby, come on over here. We all make them. Hmm. You seen these before? No, I just knew about them. It's not like we put them on the internet or anything. They're just insurance. Well, how many of these did Emily make? I don't know. She only made them when she started seeing someone important. She talked about deleting them when her and Teddy got serious, but... T.L. Teddy Langley, maybe? Come here, baby. I can hardly wait. You look amazing. That's not coma, boy. Father knows best. I was thinking more all in the family. Okay, <laughs> so team goes in, raids the basement. Landlord's right. Grow lights, hydro, the whole deal. But no weed. You know why? No, why? Because they're growing tomatoes down there. 
<laughs> Hundreds of them. <laughs> Turns out grandma's got to have some special kind of tomato you can't get outside of Italy, and it's winter, oh, so no. we're standing there all suited up, ready to bust heads. See, she just told you where to put spaghetti. Hold up. There's our guy. Piece of crap. Let's do this. Ready? Let's go. told me you'd never met Emily before. Was that with clothes on? Because I just watched a videotape of you introducing yourself to her in the sack. I'm here with my family, praying for a miracle. Have you no decency? Well, I have the decency not to be having this conversation in front of your wife. I was with Emily a few times, okay? My son met her months after it was over. He didn't know. He wanted to marry her. Oh, can't imagine that's a wedding you want on Chicago's social calendar, is it? No, I went to Emily. I offered her $100,000 just to go away. No dice? She claimed she loved him. He's probably holding out for a higher price. But then you went to your son. I told him there are women you enjoy, and there are women you bring into our family. He didn't like hearing that. No, I think you told him a lot more than that. I think you told him exactly what type of girl Emily was and exactly what she was for you, positions and all. Oh, man, you got to give me something no, to do. I, I thought he could handle it. I thought oh. he had gotten over his demons, that he had moved on. You know, you raise a son, you try to do your best. Teddy was never who I expected him to be. But he is not a killer. Well, he was going to marry a pro. Well, I went to the club. I told Julie the situation was unacceptable. Julie's the madam? She is the hostess. I thought she would guide him to someone else. Show him these girls are a dime a dozen. Or talk to him. Make her see reason. So, uh, she was supposed to fix it? Yeah. Well, it looks like she did. Chicago has always been a city of big appetites, and while money was first and foremost in the minds of the men who made it, what they often chose to spend it on was sex. At the turn of the 20th century, brothels in the Levy District kept respectable women safe from their husbands' sinful instincts, and made millions for the madams who ran the scene. And like the product, the economics haven't changed. Mina Everly, the most famous madam the city ever saw, once advised her girls it was better to have one $50 client than ten $5 ones. There's less wear and tear on the merchandise. We don't open till eight. What if we want a gold digger before then? Her name's Emily. You know her? Should I? She made a living off of sleeping with men she met at this club, and we just found her murdered. Mm. I run a nightclub. I can't watch over every girl that comes in here, and I certainly can't control who they sleep with when they leave. And you don't strike me as a prude, detective. Oh, I'm not a prude. But I am an equal opportunity, SOB. See, we've been cracking down on streetwalkers all over the city, and the way I see it, a whorehouse is a whorehouse, whether it serves Chris style or old style. And if I think a hooker's been killed by a pimp, I'm gonna tear it open, no matter what name she chooses to call herself, or how Richard Johns might be. We sell drinks in the dance floor. I pay my taxes, everything is up to code. So what are you thinking of charging me with, detective? Felony matchmaking? <laughs> Come on. Come back whenever you want. I'll wave the cover. I'll even give you a plus one. Every time I get a show, I don't have to tell her that she already knows. In the front row, Yes, yes. Seems like yesterday we were doing crowd control on bus like this. Well, that's because it was yesterday. Oh, man. Ernie, the team, the bus, this is the best first day I've ever had. Uh -huh. So when are we going out? Out? Come on, Saki. We gotta celebrate. You got anything better to do to me? Oh, all right, then. Come on. <laughs> you and me, I'm buying wherever you want to go. All right. Um, Dusty's? You're buying. Okay. Yeah, Dusty's it is. Yeah. Guys, 
Come on, let's get him in, get him processed. All right. What's all this? I can't afford rent without Emily. And besides, I don't really feel safe here alone. Where are you gonna go? Home. Colorado. Home is good. Just hoping you could help us out first. Maybe uh, tell us a little bit more about how things work at the club. Maybe if you know some other girls that ran into trouble. You know, it's a shame we didn't meet 10 years from now. Yeah. Yeah, then you two could have gotten married and lived up your first husband's money. Okay. Right. So I'm just having a... I don't want to end up like Emily. You're not going to end up like Emily, okay? I can protect you. We'll keep you safe. Look, if you help us, you're helping her. Can I think about it? Okay. She's terrified. She's afraid that that madam's going to send someone after her. You can blame her? Saki. It's me. Oh, uh, you're on speaker, Dean. Hi, Caleb. Hey, Dina. So, listen, that conference we had tonight at JJ's school, I gotta move it. Uh, when to? I was thinking tomorrow, 8 o'clock. Okay, sounds great, sounds great. Uh, I gotta run, Dean. All right, I'll see you tomorrow, then. See you tomorrow. We see each other a lot for divorced people. Yeah, we got a son. Yeah, right. boy's girl's place, right? Mm -hmm. And she has one of those, uh, what do you call it? A cockadoodle? A cockapoo? Okay, a cockapoo. <laughs> anyway, she had one of those. <laughs> and it was this little yappy-ass dog, and she used to dress it up, you know, thematically, for, like, holidays. And it was my boy's crazy ex-girlfriend, not the other one. Mm -hmm. Hey. Hey! What the hell are you doing back there? Nothing, man. God! <laughs> No, 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 you... I don't know. Get him, man! How does he have a gun? And in closing, I'd like to thank the mayor's office for continuing to support the CAPS program. Sure couldn't do it without you. Thank you. Call off your lap dog. Which lap dog would that be? Your detective friend sniffing around in bad places. That's the job description, Dennis. Uh, does the job include making the mayor's top donors nervous? Because if it does, he deserves a promotion. And so will you. Election coming up. Big donors are worth a lot. Yeah. My only question is, do you think they're worth more than my radios? Devers, got a visitor. I, I, uh, I thought you'd be in Aspen by now. You asked me to think about it, so I thought about it, and I want to talk. Great. That's great. Let me just get my partner. Don't worry. We're going to make sure nothing like this happens again. I know. All right, uh, get you a drink or something before we get started? You want a coffee or pop? No, thanks. I just want to get this over with. Okay. All right, we can do that. Uh, okay, Taylor, what do you got for us? Um, my roommate, Emily, was involved in a mentally and physically abusive relationship with her boyfriend. You said earlier that he'd never hurt her. On numerous occasions, including the night of her death, I witnessed Teddy threaten to kill Emily. And then he did. Do you know where I was 20 minutes ago? Having dinner with my wife. Who after 28 years of marriage, I actually still love and hate to disappoint. So imagine my chagrin when I get my ass hauled out here because some genius forgot to pat down an armed suspect and almost had his fellow officers killed. God help each and every one of you if someone had actually been shot. I want ahead and I want it now. I understand, and I take full responsibility. I failed to frisk the suspect properly. And who the hell are you? Officer Vonda Wasaki, sir. Wasaki? Like in Jarek Wasaki? He's my uncle, sir. 
clean up your team, Musikian. No one wants me down here again. Now, Taylor, previously you told us you didn't know what the argument between Teddy and Emily was about because you couldn't hear it, so I don't get it. The truth is, I saw them fighting and I followed them. I heard him threaten her. I heard the whole thing. Wasaki. Yeah. This just came for you from traffic. Oh, thanks. I appreciate it, Lenny. So you believe Teddy killed Emily? Yes. Because there was a history of him abusing her? Yes. Guess you got your black card, huh? Is it Teddy's father? He'd rather have his brain-dead kid take a hit for murder than risk ruining his precious reputation? Or his favorite whorehouse. No. Oh, so it's the madam. She pays you to change your story and then just charges it off as a business expense. It wasn't easy for me to come here. As easy as lying on your back for some downtown fat cat. I'd like to leave now. Here, I'll show you all. I'm sure you got a limo waiting for you outside. I, I got it. Thanks for coming in. If there's anything else, we'll give you a call. All right. Thank you, Lenny. I appreciate it. Sure thing. Hey, what happened today? Thought you might. Look. No, listen to me. Whatever you think about me, I taught Vonda better than that, okay? I'll get inside her head as long as it takes, as much as it takes. You won't have the problem again. She's a rookie, Wasaki. We all made mistakes. Let's go. Where? Principal's office. The mayor's chief of staff has some concerns about the allocation of our resources. Regarding? Regarding your witch hunt into legal businesses in the Gold Coast. Judge Parkerson tells us you approached him to sign a search warrant for a nightclub down on Dearborn. I did, and the man refused, but he's always been a coward, so I'm going to move on to the next judge. Lou Parkerson is a friend of mine, and he refused because this city has worked long and hard to make Chicago an international destination, and the Gold Coast Entertainment District is a jewel in our crown. You know, we got vice teams rounding up $20 cluckers every night of the week, and you want us to turn a blind eye to a straight-up whorehouse because it services the city's most powerful citizens? Do you have hard proof of criminal activity, or is this just a fishing expedition? Right. You're not to go anywhere near that nightclub again. Do you hear me? Either of you. You understand? Yes. No. Tell me you understand. I understand. Yes, ma'am, I understand. Good. Thank you, detectives. I'll drive home safely. Now, the mayor appreciates your help on this, and he asked me to tell you he reviewed the budget numbers personally. Looks like there are funds available for your radios after all. Great. Well, I will get them out on the street tonight. Thank you, Dennis. We're not going home, are we? Not back to the club, are you? Seriously, after that? Look, we're off the clock. You want to save your resume for some DC bean counter? We can split up. You looked in my file. You knew I went to Northwestern. You knew I applied to the FBI, and you've just been messing with me ever since. Well, the man's going to know who he's saddled up with. No, 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 no. You just like to find a reason not to trust anyone. Kid, I told you to save yourself, OK? Leave. You want to dump me? It's because of who you are, not because of who I am. You can tell me where we're going? I want to find a judge with some backbone. You sure you want to do this? Absolutely. Thank you so much, Judge. My pleasure. Hell at court elections the next month. <laughs> you have plenty on retiring? They're gonna have to drag my corpse out of that courtroom with the gavel still clutching my hand. <laughs> Good for you, sir. Good Thanks for you. I appreciate it. If you run across Tommy O'Reilly in that club. I'll be sure to drag him right out the front door, sir.
be some kind of Irish wake for sun. All right, Teddy, come on, night's over. Hey, come on, get off. Get the hell off of me. Oh, yours, Dave. What are we charging him with? Doesn't matter. It's not going to stick. Just make sure you call his wife to bail him out. Midwestern Med ICU, room 1470. Nighty night, Teddy. For. I don't know, but if all the girls keep insurance, imagine what the top dog has got. What the hell are you doing in here? We're shutting down a brothel. Oh, excuse me, detective. Everything we do is legal. Yeah, well, I got you in five counts of serving underage down there. That's enough for tonight. You come back tomorrow, I'll start looking into the coke dealer working the dance floor. You're hiring practices. Got it. Is it good? Oh, yeah. Okay, wait. All right. What do you want? What do you want to make the stop? I want to put you out of business. <laughs> Have you ever tried to keep rich men and pretty women apart? It doesn't work for long. Works for tonight. Tomorrow you'll open shop in Miami or Vegas. Fine. But Chicago is closed. According to one list, the state of Illinois has produced five of the 20 most powerful women on earth. What is it about this place that gives us the power and the poise to take the reins, to succeed, to thrive against the odds? If you ask me, it's because if you can hone your craft in the city of Chicago, claw your way up from the corruption and the muck, it gives you the strength to take over the world. How dare you? You disobeyed my explicit orders, and you dragged Detective Evers down into the muck with you. I, I, it was my decision to go along. Oh, really? Well, it was a very poor one, Detective. You've got two weeks suspension without pay to begin with. Now, you wait outside while I have a word with Chief of Staff Mahoney. I don't want them suspended. I want them fired. You are right. Wisaki is a loose cannon, but you know what? If I fire him, he's going to go straight to the press, he's going to blow the whistle on the club, and he's going to start naming names by suspending him. We take him off the streets he loves for a couple of weeks, and we guarantee his silence if he ever wants his job back, which, trust me, he does. Fine. Get in here, the both of you. Well, considering. Yeah, considering. I'm sorry about the extra week, but one wasn't going to cut it with him or the mayor. Yeah, well, it gives me a chance to go bowling up in the Dells. Besides, I disobeyed a direct order from the superintendent. Yes, and that was very naughty. You open it? There's a lot of names you're going to recognize. Today, the radios, tomorrow, the world. So the two of you planned that whole thing. None of that was real. Oh, no, the suspension is real. You got a black mark on your record, Wildcat. Maybe you should spend your time off interning at Quantico, show up some of the damage. So the club goes down. Only way it could. Super couldn't have a fingerprints on it. And now she has intel on all of Julie's clients. Which would be useful down the road. But uh, Coma Boy takes a rap for Emily's murder. No. What? Well, then who? You murdered your friend's girlfriend, you stole his car, you dumped him on the sidewalk and left him to die. Man, that's pretty much got to be the worst night of your life. Am I right? Seriously, man, this is ridiculous. I don't even know what you're talking about. Oh, come on, Mason. Sure you do. You want to know how I know? Because this was taken at the stoplight of Division in Larrabee. And that is you behind the wheel of Teddy's car. Right about the time Teddy was getting picked up off the sidewalk and taken to Midwestern Med, ODing from your junk. Not that it did him any good. Do you know the best part? That's Emily's body right there. It's a good thing she was dressed to party because those sequins really catch the light from the flash. Well, I'm guessing you were probably too stoned to even realize you ran the light, huh? I mean, bottom line, these photos make you look like a cold-blooded killer, and the problem is I don't think you are. But the jury's gonna need a reason to ever let you see the light of day again. Teddy came over, and I sold him a little age. Wasn't even that much. Okay. It's helpful. 
And then we're shooting up, you know, and um, Emily shows up at my place and she starts screaming at me. Why was I letting Teddy score? And uh, I mean, she came at me, man. And Teddy's not an out, turning blue, and I just lost it. I lost it on her. Can we call it a self-defense thing? So you're a date? Just a friend. You want to tell me what happened today? I messed up. Yeah. I messed up and I'm taking my punishment like a big girl. It's okay. No, it's not okay, okay? I'm not going to lose you to some boneheaded mistake. You won't. Do you understand? Yes. All right. I spoke with Ernie and he seems fine about letting you stay on. No, he better be. What do you mean by that? Nothing. No. What are you saying? You're covering for the moose? <laughs> Vonda, why? Because I'm your niece and he doesn't like you. you know, so it was just a matter of time before he decided to keep Isaac on the team and bounce me back out to street patrol. Now that I took a bullet for him, getting rid of me won't be so easy. Have a good night. Old radios are in the donation bin. New radios are up here with me. What's your name, officer? Jorge Rodriguez. Where'd you grow up? Dumble Park, man. Oh, yeah? Which high school? Roberta Clemente. Class of 2003. You know Clemente? Know it. I played you guys in basketball all four years. I was CPL, Red Division. Oh, yeah? Where did you go? Phillips. Class you don't need to know. Thanks. You're welcome. Stay safe. What's your name, officer? And don't sulk. I followed you when the top cop told me not to. You didn't tell me about the plan. You didn't tell me the whole time you knew the dealer was the killer. You know, I tried to warn you off the club raid so you wouldn't take the hit. Oh, please, you weren't trying to protect me. You were just trying to get me to leave because you don't trust me. Oh, something like that, yeah. Yeah, well, how do I know I can trust you? You don't need to worry about me. Why, because you're such a straight-up guy? Does your fiancé trust you? Even though you're sleeping with your ex-wife? What did you say? Yeah, that's why you always warn Dina that she's on speaker every time she calls so she doesn't say something I'm not supposed to hear. That's why she always sounds like she's talking in code. Your fiancé cool with you having ex-sex? She doesn't know. Yeah, well, you keep secrets from your fiancé. You don't keep secrets from your partner. 